السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. What a beautiful, pleasurable evening Allah subhanahu wa taala blessed us with. And I really had in my mind to speak about something else. But when I was standing in the tarawih and listening to the Quran being recited by the Hufad and the Qurra, it dawned upon me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us constantly messages and secrets in this Quran. Even if I wanted to speak about what I originally had in mind, it would be impossible for me to ignore the direct messages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us in the Holy Quran. What we recited tonight, it dawned upon me that the first word revealed when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Ghari Hira to start the process of 23 years of revelation coming down. The first word chosen to be revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Iqra. And sometimes people translate Iqra as to read. But actually, if you look at what happened after the first word was revealed, what did he read? He read the Quran. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. After the first word, the following words that he read was the words of the Quran. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us in this month of Ramadan. I, as the only credible manufacturer who has manufactured you and I as the most perfect creation, the perfect human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his masterpiece is insan. And indeed, no credible manufacturer will manufacture anything unless if there is an instruction manual with it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in manufacturing us, in creating us as our nourisher, sustainer, he sent to us the best of his creation, Sayyidina Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa together with his own speech, his own kalam. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Inna astaqal hadith kitabullah. If you want to speak, there is no speech better than the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's as if he gave us an instruction manual so that it can assist us to knowing ourselves. Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbahu. If we know ourselves, we will know him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we know him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, man arafa rabbahu faqad arafa nafsahu. If we know the creator, we will know the qualities of the creation. And he has given us this instruction manual in the beautiful language of Arabic. And only that person who's not keen on understanding themselves will not equip themselves with the language in which the instruction manual is in. If something we are serious about, even if it's a product, and let's say that product has been sent to us and you have achieved it, you've worked hard for it, you've got that product, and you really love that product, whatever it may be, and you are given a manual in Mandarin, or maybe in Spanish, or in Portuguese, although you don't know the language, you know that there's going to be troubleshooting. There may be times when that product is going to default. And I need to know how to fix the problem. So I'll make an effort even to study that other language so that at least maybe I can understand what's going on with the product. And that's why it's incumbent on us to learn the language of the Quran. Not so that we can converse in normal conversational Arabic, but that we can understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us. And that's why I was so overwhelmed when the Hufaz recited these verses and Allah bless Qari Mu'min. He repeated this verse twice. Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an. Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an. Because the objective of the Qur'an being revealed as an instruction manual is for us to ponder on its meanings. What is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us? How are we going to get to know him if we don't understand the speech in which he is revealed? How are we going to get to know that he is awwal? He is eternal with no beginning. How are we going to know his akhir, his eternal with no ending? How, we know, how are we going to know that laysa kamithrihi shayt, that there is nothing like him? How are we going to know that la ta'akhuduhu sinatu wa la nawm, if we don't understand the words of the Quran, that he is not subject to sleep or, fat, or fatigue, he does not get tired or sleep? 
How are we going to know that Allah Samad does not just mean Allah is the eternal, but Allah Samad actually means Allah is not in need of anything for anything, yet everything is in need of Him for everything. And how are we going to know? And this is one of the other verses that they recited tonight. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ That Allah is closer to us than our own jugular vein. We may be far away from Him, but He is always close to us. And that's why, in keeping with these last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, numerous messages Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to give us. Even if we did not make the rahmah and the maghfirah of the first 20 days, even if we missed it, walas inna al-insana lafi khus, that time is gone. But the days ahead, there's sufficient time in what we may consider to be little time, there is sufficient opportunity for us to be successful. And that's why an intelligent person is not one who sees great opportunities pass them by and they leave it. An intelligent person who sees something good and he seizes it or she seizes it. A dunya sa'a fajalha ta'a. This dunya is but one hour. Spend it in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we must not lose out on this great opportunity. We must get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the Quran, he tells us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us, how is it that you can get closer to him? He asks us, even tonight, the Hafaz read these verses, you want to get close to me, let me enter into a transaction with you. A transaction of loan. Ha antum ha ulai. Tuda'awna li tunfiqu fi sabilillah. How many amongst you are prepared to give a loan in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Enter into this transaction for success. The reason I'm mentioning this, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's as if in these last few siparas and these ajza of the Quran, He's trying to give us some message to increase our spiritual appetite so we don't lose out on itqum minan nar. People are always focused on itqum minan nar. We want to save ourselves in the last 10 days from the fire of Jahannam. What does itqum minan nar mean? If you are saving yourself from the fire of Jahannam, what are you working towards? You're working towards Jannah. It's the days to work, work towards Jannah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that enter into this transaction of loan. Give me something for the sake of Allah. And give it to the people. But he reminds us, but amongst you there are misers. Those who find it difficult to give. And that's why it was such a reminder tonight thinking about the zakah fund being the every night. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to remind us as the musallis the zakah fund is there or any other uh, methodology that you have to give away your zakah, do so. It's as if Allah is trying to tell us, don't be a miser. If you have not discharged, you are a miser. But if you are a miser, you're only being a miser to yourself. And then Allah gives us the reality and the haqiqah. Wallahu al-ghani. Although I'm asking you for a loan in the part of Allah, it doesn't mean that I need your money. Allah is saying, I am Ghani, I am the one who has all the treasures. And you and I are the ones who are faqir, we are beggars in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then comes the plunge line. If you don't want to do it, let me tell you in advance. If you don't want to do it, it's only going to be your loss. Because all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do, He will take us and he will push us one side and he will replace us with better people who will do the job. That's why amongst the du'as we make Allahumma astakhtimni wa la tastabdilni Oh Allah, use me for the khidmah of your deen and whatever was meant for me to do, Ya Allah, don't replace me with anyone else that's going to do my job that you facilitated for me. And that's why we have to increase our spiritual appetite. Like Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood, he reminds us about that incident when he came to the Masjid al-Nabawi, and he sees the Prophet ﷺ making nawafil. And he says, now is my opportunity to have the Prophet ﷺ all to myself. I'm going to stand and pray with him. And here the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us spiritual appetite through the words of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was a school of Qur'an. If you want to get the Qur'an fresh, you get it from Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He was a short man, darker skinned. And... Prophet ﷺ starts with Surah Al-Baqarah. 
He thought maybe he'll stop at Muflihun, or maybe at Yabani Israel, or maybe the second Yabani Israel, or maybe he'll stop at Salbani in Sayakul. The Prophet read the whole 280 odd ayats of Surah Al Baqarah. And then he continued with Surah Al Imran. And he had to stand the full time and develop a spiritual appetite. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wasta'inu bi sabri wa salah. And seek Allah's help through sabr and salah. In Ramadan, I look at these verses and I think, and the Mufassirin said, when Allah referred to sabr in these verses, He said, Wasta'inu bi siyami wa salah. The sabr is actually siyam. Allah is referring to the patience that the one who fast has. Referring to the, it as wasta'inu and seek help with fasting and salah. And in Ramadan, in looking at this ayah, it comes to mind that it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, seek my help through the fasting in Ramadan and the taraweeh in Ramadan. Wasta'inu bi sabri wa salah. Whatever needs you have, make your fast dedicatedly and perform your taraweeh. Because this qiyam of taraweeh has the opportunity for us to forgive all our sins. And that's why we have to increase our spiritual appetite. And amongst the things that we have to do is try and understand the Qur'an. Because if we don't understand the Qur'an, we don't know what the surahs mean and what they stand for and the length and the duration, we may become like that the uneducated Bedouin, the Jahil Bedouin that came to the masjid and he started performing the salah for the first time. He comes to the jama'ah and here the imam stands up and he recites in the first rakat surah al-Baqarah and he completes the salah in the second rakat. And then after that the musallis, some of them came to say, Imam, how can you do this to us? Baqarah. The next day the Bedouin comes and then as he's about to stand for the salah, and he, the imam starts reading the salah, and he starts reading, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil fil. He starts reading Surah Al-Fil, the elephant. The man turns around and he runs outside the mosque. The man, the other musalli comes, oh, why are you leaving? He said, if Baqarah was so long, what do you think Fil is going to be? <laughs> but he didn't know that Surah Al-Fil is a short surah. So we have a few moments left. We have to seize the opportunity. And that's why the great mashayikh always said there are a few things, four things that can become a hijab, a veil, and an obstruction between, between you, us, achieving our spiritual appetite and achieving the spirituality required. And amongst those four things, and I'll go through it quickly, fudulu ta'am, excessive eating. For the next few days, we have to cut down. Because in South Africa, you know what the condition is. Even we are like hungry lions at the time of iftar. Even before the mu'adhan can say the alif of Allahu Akbar, we are in. <laughs> uh. So we have to, and we have to remember that our bodies are our man. And I can speak from experience, you can see from my size. That clearly, we have to be very careful what we put in. You can't put diesel in a petrol tank. And you can't put 90 liters in an 80 liter tank. We'll never do that to our vehicles, but we do that to our bodies. And they say, well, you are what you eat. And Allah bless us and give us a special stent because our women folk really make good curries and good food. And it's difficult to abstain from such delicious food that we are presented with. Allah bless them. But we have to do it in moderation because the Prophet ﷺ said, بِحَسْبِبْنِ آدَمْ لُقَيْمَاتِ it is befitting for the children of Adam that they eat mini bites, not megabytes. Yuqim nusulba, sufficient just to stand up, sufficient to give the a strength to stand up. Wa in kana la bud, but if you are not in a position to eat mini bites and you want to have Gatsby bites, then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fathuluthun wa thuluth wa thuluth. One third li taami, one third for food. One third li sharabi, thuluth li sharabi, one third for water. And thuluth li nafasi. This is the important one. Give one third for A to breathe. Let us not eat so much that we cannot even breathe. One of the other factors that impacts on us getting spirituality is fudulul kalam, excessive talking. 
The Prophet said, وَخَيْرُ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ The best speech is the kalam of Allah. If our speech, in comparison to us speaking the kalam of Allah, if our recitation of the Qur'an is less than our idle talk, then we are losers. The Qur'an is the best speech. They say, a wise man speaks when he has something to say. A fool speaks when he wants to say something. The next thing that keeps us from achieving that spirituality and appetite is fudulul manam, excessive sleeping. And Ramadan seems to be a month where we establish an amazing relationship with our beds. Extra sleep. Trying to do away with the pangs of hunger by sleeping it away. And we are so fortunate we have a 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. fast. We have to maximize the time. The Mashaya said if you are becoming lazy and you're sleeping too much, increase your istighfar. Recite astaghfirullah at least 100 times a day. The last one is fudul makhalaqatil anam, excessive intermingling, excessive gatherings in which has no benefit really. So these are amongst the things that we should practically utilize so that inshallah we can maximize these great opportunities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put before us. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it impossible for us to go anywhere and to achieve anything but Jannatul Naim. He's given us Rahma, He's given us Maghfira, He's given us Itqam Minan Nar. If that's not sufficient, He gives us Laylatul Qadri Khayrun Min Al Fishar. And then the Mashaik says there's a night which is so special and has so much of blessings. Imam al Shafi mentions it, and many of the Mashaik. It's the night of Eid. It's called Laylatul Jaiza. It's the night of prize giving. You can't really achieve a prize if we don't put effort. We have few days. Few moments left. Al Hayatu Kalamh al Basar. Life is like a wink of an eyelid. Let us not lose out on these opportunities. A reminder to myself and to all of you it's an absolute honor praying taraweeh with all of you and being with you every night. Like Allah has gathered us here together. For the next few days, may we increase our ibadat, increase our love for each other, our sadaqat, our zakat, our siyam, and as well as our qiyam. And in that way, like we are sitting here together. May Allah gather us in Jannatul Naim together. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.